The air around Sergeant Jack Dalton was thick with the acrid scent of burning metal and dust. He moved swiftly through the debris-strewn streets of Vexalia, a once great city on the planet Xyleria, now reduced to ruins by the relentless conflict between the Xylerian royal forces and their ruthless enemies. Jack, part of an elite human squad sent to assist the Xylerians, had grown accustomed to the sounds of war. The crackle of distant energy weapons, the low hum of ships in the sky, and the ever-present rumble of crumbling buildings. He moved with purpose, checking every corner for survivors. His mission was simple, clear the area, secure the wounded, and await extraction. But as he passed a crumbling palace wall, he heard a faint noise, a muffled groan, almost drowned out by the chaos surrounding him. Pausing, Jack turned his gaze toward the massive pile of rubble that had once been part of the royal palace. The sound came again, faint but unmistakable. Ignoring the warning in his mind to stay on mission, he rushed toward the source. Kneeling, he began to clear the debris, his heart racing with the knowledge that he might not have much time. With each piece of fallen stone he removed, the groans grew louder, until finally he uncovered a figure, clad in ornate but battered royal armor her face bruised and pale. It was Princess Seraphine. Her status as Xyleria's fiercest warrior and royal heir was well known, her courage on the battlefield a symbol of hope for her people. But now she was barely conscious, her body pinned beneath the heavy rubble. Without hesitation, Jack began to work faster, carefully shifting the stone and metal that trapped her legs. Stay with me, he urged as he freed her from the debris. The weight of the rubble gone, Seraphine gasped for air, her emerald eyes flickering open for the first time. You saved me, she whispered, her voice weak but filled with surprise. Jack nodded, pulling her up and supporting her weight as they moved to a safer location. He looked around, realizing that the battle still raged on around them, and extraction would take time. You're not safe yet, princess, but I've got you. Seraphine stared at him dazed and struggling to stay conscious, but her grip on his arm tightened, as if already realizing that this moment, this man had just changed her fate. The war had paused for a brief moment, a lull that allowed Jack to find shelter for them both in the remnants of a nearby outpost. There, he administered what little first aid he could, wrapping Seraphine's injuries and giving her water. She leaned against the cold stone wall, her breath slow but steady, her fierce eyes never leaving Jack as he worked. When she finally spoke, her voice was stronger than before. Why did you risk yourself for me, human? Jack didn't pause from his task, because it was the right thing to do. Your life matters, princess. I wasn't about to leave you there to die. A flicker of amusement crossed her face, though it was laced with pain. Even though I'm an alien? He met her gaze without hesitation. Doesn't matter. I don't leave anyone behind. For a long moment, Seraphine said nothing, but Jack could see her calculating something behind her emerald eyes. When she spoke again, her words were unexpected, and they hit Jack like a bolt of lightning. Then marry me. Jack froze. He had been checking her pulse, but now he was staring at her, unsure if he had heard correctly. What? Seraphine, despite her battered state, lifted her chin in defiance, as though daring him to refuse. You saved my life, and I am bound by the sacred laws of Zeleria to repay that debt. Marry me, and I will ensure your people gain honor and status. It is the only way I can properly repay you. Jack blinked, trying to process what she was saying. Princess, I didn't save you expecting anything in return, especially not marriage. I did it because it was the right thing to do. That's precisely why, she said firmly, leaning forward despite her injuries. You acted without selfishness. That makes you worthy, and it is why I am asking this of you. Jack opened his mouth to argue, but the intensity in Seraphine's gaze silenced him. She wasn't joking, and she wasn't delirious. Her proposal was real, and she was serious. I don't, I don't think your father would approve of this, Jack said, trying to deflect the situation. The king, your people, they'll... They'll be shocked, Seraphine interrupted, a glimmer of defiance in her voice, but they will respect my decision. My father's approval will follow. Jack took a step back, running a hand through his dust-covered hair, still reeling from the enormity of what she was asking. Marry an alien princess? What had started as a routine rescue mission had now become something far more complicated and life-changing. 
But Seraphine wasn't done. Please, she said, her tone softening. You saved my life. Let me repay the debt in a way that will honor both of us. The weight of her request hung in the air between them. Jack stared at her, conflicted. Part of him wanted to refuse to go back to the way things were. But another part of him, one that he couldn't quite ignore, was drawn to the strange but powerful bond that had formed between them in the midst of chaos. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Jack nodded. I'll do it, he said quietly. I'll marry you. And with those words, Jack realized his life had just taken a turn that would shock not only the galaxy, but himself. The news of Princess Seraphine's proposal to the human soldier spread like wildfire, faster than even the swiftest ships could travel. What had begun as a quiet rescue amidst the chaos of battle had now turned into the most scandalous event the galaxy had seen in years. On Earth, the media had a field day. Headlines blared, Human soldier to marry alien royalty, a diplomatic coup or romantic folly. The public was divided. Some saw it as a potential breakthrough in human-alien relations, while others found it absurd, a decision that could put Earth in the crosshairs of alien politics. Military analysts speculated about the strategic implications while politicians scrambled to get ahead of the situation, unsure if they should support or condemn it. But it was on Zyleria where the real uproar began. In the grand halls of King Vorenus's palace, the royal advisors were beside themselves with fury. The king's court was thrown into chaos at the mere suggestion that a human, a soldier, no less, would be allowed to marry their princess. Seraphine's proposal was seen not only as an insult to Zylerian pride, but as a destabilizing force in the delicate balance of their political alliances. Inside the palace, King Vorenus himself was livid. Pacing back and forth in his private chambers, his golden eyes burned with disbelief. His daughter, the fierce and proud heir to the Zylerian throne, had chosen to repay her life debt by marrying a human. It was inconceivable. Unacceptable, the king roared, his voice echoing through the vast room. How could she bring this dishonor upon our house? His advisors, standing nearby, murmured their agreement. One, a tall and thin Zylerian with icy blue skin, spoke carefully. Your Majesty, this union could cause unrest among our allies. The other royal families will see this as a sign of weakness. The king slammed his fist on the marble table, sending a shudder through the room. My daughter has always been headstrong, but this, this is beyond reckless. As the king fumed, Seraphine entered the room, her armor still marked by the battle she had only just escaped. Her eyes met her father's with a determination that made it clear she had no regrets. You summoned me, father? Foranus turned sharply, his gaze narrowing on his daughter. You think I will allow you to marry that human? Do you understand what this means for our family, for our people? Seraphine stood tall, her voice calm but resolute. He saved my life. By our laws, I owe him a debt. This is my decision, and I will not be swayed. The king's anger flared but beneath it was a hint of something else. Concern, perhaps even fear. There are other ways to repay a life debt, Seraphine. You know that. This marriage will throw the entire galaxy into chaos. Seraphine took a step closer, her voice softening, though her resolve remained unshaken. Father, I know this is hard for you to accept, but Jack isn't just some outsider. He risked everything to save me without asking for anything in return. He did what no one else could, and I've come to respect him more than I've ever respected anyone in my life. Varenna stared at his daughter, searching her face for any sign of doubt. But there was none. Seraphine's mind was made up, and her father knew, deep down, that there was no changing it. Finally, with a heavy sigh, he spoke. You are my heir, Seraphine. Your choices will shape the future of Xyleria. If you choose this path, know that there will be consequences, both for you and for him. I understand, she said simply. The king's eyes softened, if only for a moment. Then let us see if this human is worthy of you. Jack stood in the grand audience chamber of the Zylerian palace, its towering arches and gleaming crystal walls making him feel small and insignificant. Despite the grandeur of his surroundings, he was keenly aware of the tension in the air. King Vorinus had summoned him for a formal audience, and Jack had no illusions about the gravity of the situation. He adjusted his military uniform, ensuring it was neat. But no amount of preparation could calm the nervous energy building inside him. 
the entire galaxy had learned of his engagement to the Zylerian princess, and now he was about to face the wrath of the most powerful ruler on Zyleria. He knew this wouldn't be easy. The grand door swung open, and Jack was ushered in by the king's guards. At the far end of the room, atop an elevated platform, sat King Vornus, his imposing figure framed by the deep blue light that filtered through the palace's crystalline windows. His expression was cold, his golden eyes fixed on Jack with an intensity that sent a chill down the human soldier's spine. Jack walked forward, each step echoing in the vast chamber. He stopped a respectful distance from the throne and bowed his head. Your Majesty. The king's voice was sharp and unforgiving. Do you understand the magnitude of what you've done, human? Jack raised his head, meeting the king's piercing gaze. I do, Your Majesty, but I didn't save your daughter for personal gain. I did it because it was the right thing to do. King Voronis leaned forward, his expression darkening. And yet, here you stand, prepared to marry into royalty. You think a simple act of bravery grants you the right to claim my daughter? Jack's jaw clenched, but he forced himself to remain calm. I didn't ask for this, Your Majesty. Princess Seraphine made the offer, and I agreed out of respect for her. But I know I'm not the match you imagined for her. The king rose from his throne, his voice rising in fury. You are not a match at all. You are an outsider, a human. You do not belong in our royal line. Jack stood his ground, his heart pounding in his chest. With all due respect, Your Majesty, Seraphine made her choice. I didn't force this. I'm here because she asked me to be. For a moment, the room was silent, the tension palpable. Then, King Vorenus stepped down from the platform, approaching Jack with measured steps. When he stopped, he stood mere inches from the human, his gaze filled with disdain. If you truly wish to marry my daughter, you will prove your worth, the king said, his voice low and dangerous. You will undergo three trials, designed to test your strength, your intellect, and your loyalty. If you succeed, only then will I even consider allowing this marriage to proceed. Jack's eyes met the king's, unwavering. I accept your challenge, your majesty. Boranus narrowed his eyes, studying Jack for a long moment before finally turning away. Then may the trials begin. As Jack was led away by the royal guards, his heart raced with a mixture of fear and determination. He had no idea what the trials would entail, but one thing was clear. If he wanted to marry Princess Seraphine, he would have to fight for it, perhaps harder than he had ever fought in his life. The grand arena of Zalaria stood at the heart of the royal city, a massive circular structure made of gleaming, semi-transparent crystal that captured the light of the twin suns above. Inside, nobles and dignitaries from across the galaxy gathered, eager to witness the trials that would determine the fate of an unprecedented union. Jack stood at the center of the arena, his heart pounding in his chest, aware that every eye was on him. His first trial was one of strength, a test designed to prove his physical abilities. Silurian warriors, tall, powerful, and far stronger than any human, had trained their entire lives for combat. Jack was not a novice, but against these alien soldiers, his human strength seemed insignificant. Still, he had fought against impossible odds before and he wasn't going to back down now. The Zylerian captain who led the challenge stepped forward, his silver armor gleaming. Without a word, the captain raised his massive energy staff, and the trial began. Jack dodged the first strike, barely missing the powerful blow that would have knocked him out cold. He moved swiftly, relying on his agility and his experience in battle. Though he lacked the raw power of his opponent, Jack used his speed to his advantage. He studied the captain's movements, looking for openings, and when he found one, he struck with precision, using his human combat training to disarm the alien warrior. The crowd gasped as Jack swept the captain's legs out from under him and sent the energy staff clattering across the arena floor. With the Zylerian warrior down, Jack stood tall, breathing heavily, but victorious. There was a stunned silence before the crowd erupted into applause. Jack had passed the first trial. The second trial tested his intellect. He was led into a labyrinth beneath the palace, where he was tasked with solving ancient puzzles that had been created by the royal family centuries ago. The Zylerians valued intelligence as much as strength, and these puzzles were designed to challenge both wit and strategy.
The dimly lit corridors were filled with traps and obstacles, but Jack's mind raced as he carefully analyzed each puzzle. From intricate mathematical equations to complex spatial challenges, he solved them one by one, relying on his sharp instincts and years of military training. After what felt like hours, he finally reached the end of the labyrinth, where he found Seraphine's royal insignia waiting for him as a symbol of completion. As he emerged from the labyrinth, the court watched in awe. Jack had not only proven his physical strength but his intellect as well. The second trial was complete. The final trial, one of loyalty, was designed to test Jack's commitment to Seraphine and to Xyleria. He was brought before King Vorinus in the Grand Hall, where the court had gathered to witness the final challenge. King Vorenus, his expression unreadable, stood on the elevated platform with Seraphine beside him. The king's voice echoed through the hall as he explained the terms of the last trial. Loyalty is the greatest virtue in Xyleria, and loyalty to the crown is paramount. Sergeant Jack Dalton, you must prove that your loyalty lies not with Earth, but with my daughter and this kingdom. A holographic display flickered to life in the center of the hall, showing Earth's military command. General Marcus, Jack's superior officer, appeared on the screen, his face grim. Sergeant Dalton, you've done your part. Come home. We've received intelligence that suggests this marriage could destabilize relations with other alien factions. Earth needs you back. Abandon this quest. Jack stared at the message, feeling the weight of his decision pressing down on him. He had always been loyal to Earth, had served his planet with honor and dedication. But standing here, in this alien palace, surrounded by people who doubted his every move, Jack realized something important. His loyalty to Earth didn't mean abandoning his commitment to Seraphine. He turned to King Vorinus, his voice steady. I've served Earth my entire life, but I won't turn my back on your daughter. My loyalty is to her now, and to this kingdom. I'm staying. The court murmured in surprise. Seraphine's expression softened, her gaze filled with admiration and gratitude. King Vorenus's eyes narrowed as he studied Jack, but after a long pause, he finally nodded. You've passed the third trial. The room filled with applause, and Jack could feel the weight of the galaxy's expectations lift from his shoulders. He had proven himself in every way, physically, mentally, and emotionally. But more importantly, through these trials, he had discovered something he hadn't anticipated. A genuine bond with Seraphine. As the court celebrated his success, Seraphine stepped down from the platform and approached him. You didn't have to do this, she said softly, her voice barely audible over the noise of the crowd. But you did. Jack smiled, his heart still racing from the intensity of the trials. I didn't do it for the throne or for glory. I did it for you. Seraphine's gaze held his, and for the first time, her usually steely expression softened into something gentler. She took his hand her grip firm yet warm. You've earned your place here, Jack, not just as my husband, but as someone I can trust. The connection between them, once born from circumstance, had deepened into something more meaningful. They had faced trials together, shared moments of uncertainty, and now they stood united, not just by duty, but by a growing bond of mutual respect and care. As the crowd continued to cheer, Jack knew that this was only the beginning. He had fought for this moment and he was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. This time, not alone, but alongside Seraphine. Together, they had overcome the trials. Together, they would face the future. The days leading up to the wedding were a whirlwind of activity. What had started as a simple act of valor, a human soldier rescuing an alien princess, had evolved into an event that would shape the future of the galaxy. Leaders from across star systems were invited to the grand ceremony, not just to witness the union of Jack and Princess Seraphine, but to witness the unification of two vastly different cultures. Xyleria's royal palace had been transformed for the occasion. The Grand Hall, where Jack had faced his trials, was now adorned with iridescent banners and bioluminescent flowers, native to the planet. The crystalline walls shimmered with the reflection of the twin suns, casting a surreal dreamlike glow over the entire venue. It was a visual masterpiece, designed to impress dignitaries from every corner of the galaxy. On the day of the wedding, Jack stood at the center of it all, dressed in formal Xylerian robes that marked him as royalty. His human military uniform was gone, replaced by the colors of the Xylerian royal family. 
The unfamiliar fabric felt strange against his skin, but there was a strange sense of belonging that came with it. He wasn't just a soldier anymore. He was about to become part of something far bigger. The procession began with a hauntingly beautiful melody played by Zylerian musicians, their alien instruments producing notes that seemed to resonate with the very air itself. As the music filled the grand hall, the massive doors opened and Princess Seraphine entered, flanked by her royal guard. She was radiant, wearing a gown made of shimmering silver and deep emerald threads, woven from the finest materials Ilaria had to offer. Her fierce, battle-hardened demeanor was softened by the elegance of her attire, but there was still a fire in her eyes, a reminder that this was not just a royal ceremony but the union of two warriors. As Seraphine walked down the aisle, the room fell into reverent silence. The entire galaxy had turned its gaze toward this moment. Jack, watching her approach, felt his heart swell with emotion. This woman, this fierce and courageous princess, had chosen him. And he had chosen her, not just out of duty, but because he had come to truly care for her. When Seraphine reached him, their eyes met, and for a brief moment, the entire world seemed to fade away. It was just the two of them, standing at the precipice of a new future. The ceremony, conducted by the Zylerian high priest, was a blend of both human and Zylerian traditions. Vows were exchanged, promising loyalty, respect, and unity not just between Jack and Seraphine, but between their people as well. As the final words were spoken, the high priest declared them bonded by both heart and law. The hall erupted into applause, a thunderous sound that reverberated through the palace. Jack turned to Seraphine, their hands still clasped together, and for the first time, he allowed himself to smile fully. They had done it. They had defied the odds, silenced the critics, and forged a path that no one had seen coming. As they walked out of the Grand Hall, hand in hand, the galaxy watched with a mixture of admiration and curiosity. This was more than a royal wedding, it was the dawn of a new era. The celebrations that followed were like nothing Jack had ever experienced. The Zylerians, known for their stoic nature in times of conflict, celebrated with uncharacteristic exuberance. The city streets were filled with people cheering for their new royal couple. Fireworks, strange, glowing orbs of light, danced across the night sky, while music played from every corner of the city. At the grand banquet held in their honor, Jack and Seraphine were seated at the head of a massive table, surrounded by dignitaries, military leaders, and representatives from allied planets. Jack could feel the weight of their attention, but this time, it didn't feel overwhelming. The whispers of doubt that had followed him since the beginning of this journey were gone, replaced by respect and curiosity. As they dined, Seraphine leaned over to Jack, her voice quiet amidst the noise of the celebration. I never thought this would happen, she admitted, that we would reach this point. Jack smiled, turning to face her. Neither did I, but I'm glad we did. She glanced out at the crowd, her expression softening. I know it hasn't been easy, the trials, the scrutiny, the expectations, but I wouldn't have chosen anyone else. You've shown me what it means to truly fight for something, not just with weapons, but with heart. Jack felt a warmth spread through him at her words. The bond they had formed had transcended the initial shock of their situation. They had become partners, equals in every sense of the word. I didn't do it alone, Jack said, meeting her gaze. You've been there every step of the way. Seraphine's lips curled into a small smile. I suppose we make a good team, don't we? A great team, Jack agreed. The banquet continued well into the night, but eventually, Jack and Seraphine found a moment of peace away from the crowd. They walked through the royal gardens, the distant lights of the city twinkling in the night. It was a rare moment of quiet, away from the prying eyes of the galaxy, where they could simply be themselves. Seraphine stopped near a fountain, the soft glow of the water reflecting in her eyes. There's something I've been thinking about, she began. With this marriage, we've done more than just secure a future for Xyleria and Earth. We've set an example. Our union shows that different worlds can come together, not just in politics, but in understanding. Jack nodded, knowing that their marriage had already shifted the way many in the galaxy viewed human-alien relations. But more than that, it had shown that people from vastly different backgrounds could find common ground. It's just the beginning, Jack said. There's a lot more we can do together. 
Seraphine's gaze softened. I know, and I'm ready to face whatever comes next, as long as you're by my side. Jack took her hand, the weight of the future pressing down on them, but with a newfound sense of purpose. Always, he promised. As they stood there, hand in hand, under the light of the twin moons, they knew that this was not just the end of one chapter, but the start of something far greater. Their marriage had defied expectations, and now, together, they would forge a path forward, one that would shape the future of not just their worlds, but the entire galaxy. And as the stars above twinkled like a thousand possibilities, Jack knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. As partners, as warriors, and as something even deeper, soulmates. In the weeks following their marriage, Jack and Seraphine settled into their new roles as partners in ruling and ambassadors for peace. Their marriage had marked a turning point, not just for Xyleria and Earth, but for the entire galaxy. Leaders from various planets sought their counsel, hoping to model alliances after the strength of their union. However, with their newfound influence came immense responsibility. Jack quickly realized that the political arena was as dangerous as any battlefield. Every move he and Seraphine made was watched closely, not just by their allies, but by those who still doubted the marriage. One particular evening, during a council meeting with ambassadors from a neighboring planet, tensions ran high. The neighboring empire had been neutral in the war, but was now seeking to exploit Xyleria's resources. As Jack listened to their thinly veiled demands, he glanced at Seraphine, her jaw set in a hard line. She had always been an expert in diplomacy, but Jack could see her frustration growing. Finally, the ambassador leaned forward, his tone condescending. Surely, the human consort would agree that Earth's interest would be best served by allowing our fleets free passage through your territory. Jack felt his temper flare. The ambassador's words were not just an insult to Xyleria's sovereignty, but to his role as Seraphine's equal. He straightened in his seat, his voice steady but firm. I didn't come here to weaken Xyleria's defenses or sell out Earth's interests. If you're looking for permission to exploit this alliance, you won't find it here. The ambassador's eyes narrowed, and for a moment, the room held its breath. Seraphine broke the tension with a calm but authoritative voice. Xyleria will not be bullied, and our alliances are based on mutual respect, not coercion. The meeting ended without an agreement, and as the ambassadors left, Jack turned to Seraphine. Do you think we made the right call? She gave him a small smile, placing a hand on his arm. We stood our ground, together. That's what matters. Jack nodded, grateful for her confidence. But as they left the council chamber, he couldn't shake the feeling that their marriage though celebrated, was still under threat. There were many who believed it was only a matter of time before their union would fail, whether by external pressure or internal strife. Late that night, in the quiet of their chambers, Seraphine voiced what had been on both their minds. We've come so far, but the challenges keep growing. Do you think we can handle it all? Jack, lying beside her, took her hand. I think we can handle anything, as long as we face it together. Seraphine smiled softly and rested her head on his chest. We're stronger than they know. And as they drifted off to sleep, Jack knew that no matter what came next, their bond had become unshakable. The galaxy might test them, but they were ready. Months turned into years, and Jack and Seraphine's influence continued to grow. Together, they navigated the complexities of intergalactic politics, forming new alliances and forging deeper connections between Earth and Xyleria. Their marriage, once seen as a scandalous anomaly, became a symbol of unity and cooperation. One of the most significant moments in their reign came when Seraphine gave birth to their first child, a daughter they named Eliana. The birth was more than a personal milestone. It was a political and cultural event that rippled across the galaxy. Eliana, with her blend of human and Xylerian heritage, embodied the future that Jack and Seraphine had fought so hard to create. News of the child's birth spread quickly, and soon representatives from across the galaxy arrived to pay their respects and offer gifts. Some came out of genuine goodwill, others out of strategic interest. But the message was clear. This child was a living symbol of the new world that Jack and Seraphine were building. As Jack held his daughter for the first time, a sense of awe washed over him. 
Eliana's bright eyes and curious gaze filled him with hope. She's perfect, he whispered to Seraphine, who lay beside him, exhausted but glowing with pride. Seraphine smiled, her hand resting on Jack's arm. She'll change the galaxy, just like we did. Jack looked down at Eliana, feeling the weight of that responsibility, but also the strength of the partnership that had brought them here. She'll grow up in a world where our differences don't divide us, where people from different planets can come together and thrive. Seraphine nodded, her voice soft, because we showed them it was possible. In the months following Eliana's birth, Jack and Seraphine continued their work, balancing the duties of ruling with the responsibilities of parenthood. Their daughter grew quickly, her presence bringing joy not only to the palace, but to the people of Xyleria and beyond. She became a symbol of hope, a reminder that even the most unlikely unions could create something beautiful and enduring. One evening, as they sat on the balcony of the royal palace, watching the twin suns set over the horizon, Jack and Seraphine reflected on their journey. The galaxy had thrown every challenge at them, but they had emerged stronger, united by love, respect, and an unshakable bond. You know, Jack said, watching the last rays of sunlight disappear, when I first met you, I never thought we'd end up here. Seraphine laughed softly, leaning against him. Neither did I, but I'm glad we did. Jack wrapped his arm around her, his heart full. We've come a long way. And we still have a long way to go, Seraphine added, her voice thoughtful. But now we have something even more powerful, something worth fighting for. Jack looked out at the stars, knowing that their journey was far from over. But whatever challenges lay ahead, he was ready to face them. Because he had Seraphine by his side. Together, they had built a legacy of unity. A legacy that would inspire generations to come. Their love, once seen as a scandal, had become a beacon of hope in a galaxy that had once been divided by fear and prejudice. And as they sat beneath the stars, Jack knew that their story was far from over. It was only just beginning.